Welcome to the first video covering content for test 2 of the OCR entry level certificate in computer science. In this video we'll be looking at primary storage. Let's begin. To understand how a computer stores data it is worth first exploring how humans store information. Humans have short term memory and long term memory which we use to store everything we learn. Short term memory is our immediate memory and it allows us to store information as you learn it. This information will stay in your brain only while you are actively thinking about it or using it. If you stop using it and do something else for a while, you will forget some or all of what you were learning previously, especially if it is new information. The short term memory also has a limited capacity, meaning it can only hold so much information before forgetting. In order to keep this information, we need to move it to our long-term memory, which can only be done by repeating our learning again and again. This leads us to long-term memory. This is where information you have used many times is stored on a long-term basis. When information is stored in long-term memory, it can often be recalled, but it sometimes can take longer to remember than it does if it was in short-term memory. So, how does this relate to primary and secondary storage in a computer? A computer's primary storage is used to store programs and data currently in use by the computer, much like short-term memory in a human. Primary memory is fast to read and write to, but loses its data when the power is switched off. By comparison, human short-term memory is fast to access, but loses information quickly. Finally, Primary memory and human short-term memory can hold a finite amount of information, and to save it for later, it needs to be moved to secondary storage or long-term memory. Secondary storage also shares characteristics with a human's long-term memory. It stores information on a long-term basis, but it is slower to access than primary memory or short-term memory, and it can also store vast quantities of data. Let's take a look now at the actual hardware that is categorised as primary storage. First we have random access memory, or RAM as it is usually abbreviated to. The purpose of RAM is to store all the programs and data the computer is currently using. For example, you probably have your operating system running, your web browser loaded to watch this video, and maybe a word processor open to take notes. Everything that you see in front of you will be currently stored in RAM, and it will either be sending data to the central processing unit to be processed, or receiving and storing data that has been processed. So, what are the characteristics of RAM? First, RAM is volatile, which means that it will lose all its data when the power is turned off. So if you have a power cut and you have not saved your notes on secondary storage, then you will lose them. Also, it is very fast, which means that the data can be read from and written to by the CPU very quickly. This has the benefit of improving your computer's overall performance. Our next primary storage device is called read-only memory, or ROM for short. ROM is a microchip installed on the motherboard which is used to store the computer's boot program, which is what starts the loading of a computer's operating system. The ROM chip also stores the BIOS, or the Basic Input Output System, which is the software that allows the screen, keyboard and mouse to operate before the operating system loads. Data is stored on the ROM chip during the manufacturing process and can only be safely written to once, but it can be read from as often as necessary. ROM is the only primary storage device that stores data permanently and is non-volatile, meaning it does not lose its data when the power is off. It is also fast, so read operations are very quick. The final part of primary memory is the cache. Cache memory sits between the central processing unit and the RAM and is super fast memory used for prefetching instructions from the RAM for the CPU to process. 
In a computer, the CPU is the fastest component by a long way. If the CPU communicated directly with the RAM, the CPU's speed and potential would not be used to its fullest, because it would have to load one instruction at a time, and it would take a long time for each instruction to arrive, meaning that the central processing unit was not used efficiently. When processing starts, a program can branch in many different directions. The data from all these different directions is loaded into cache, and if the correct instruction is in cache, then the CPU can access it almost immediately. This is called prefetching, but you do not need to know this for your exam. You just need to know that cache is extremely fast memory, which sits between the central processing unit and the RAM, and it is used to speed up the computer. Many thanks for watching. See you in the next video where we examine secondary storage.